Magical timing. Is it important? Is it not? And if it is, just how much is it? Stick around to find out. In this video, I'm going to speak a little bit about the two sides of this debate or this equation. Is it the full election route or just the planetary timing? And of course, I'm going to tell you what I think from my own personal experience and what has worked for me and continues to work for my students and even when I'm working for my clients. And I will also give you the absolute two best times to work at. So make sure you stick around until then. Now let's jump right in, but before we do that, I want you to tell me what do you look for when you're trying to schedule a ritual? Let me know your answer in the comment section. I'm excited to hear it. Many years ago, I remember as a beginner, I really didn't know what magical timing is. And to be honest, I didn't care until I learned about it and I decided to give it a try. My first brush with magical timing came working with King and Budeheb. I was working with the Jin Kings for a while there. And at some point I decided, well, hey, I'm going to perform a ritual with King and Budeheb, which is the Sunday's king and associated with the planet of the sun. So I decided to do that ritual on his day and at the appropriate hour, which is the sun's hour. And I was just blown away. You know, I could feel that not only the experience of the ritual itself was more intense and more tangible, the results were also. And what was really most interesting for me is that they were quicker to manifest and more powerful. So that sparked my interest into astrology and I started studying a little bit about it. And of course, you know, that's a deep enough rabbit hole in and of itself. Um, but depending on the sources and what kind of magic that you're practicing, you start to see increasingly complicated indications you know i'm thinking of cases like the picatrix where you have to look at the moon is it slow is it fast moving is it rising what is this planet doing what is that planet doing and this whole idea that you have to look at all the planets at a single given time you know and to have this perfect election you know, and I see people many times over the internet, they're looking for the perfect election to make a talisman, so on and so forth. And they have nothing against that kind of practice. It's just that I don't like to make my life more complicated than it really is. I remember quite some time ago, I used to like to work and make talismans when there are conjunctions. And sometimes those conjunctions would happen at very unpractical times for me, like, you know, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. And I would be working the next day. And one day uh, I did, you know, a talisman when it was, I think, six planets conjunct in a single sign. The operation was a success, but of course I had work the next day. So as I was driving to work and falling asleep at the wheel, I didn't feel so smart. So since that day, I kind of took this step back from full elections and I looked into the fact that, you know, if if a good time comes up, then, you know, so be it. And if there is no good time, then so be it. I mean, astrology is a very subjective field and that's why many people don't respect it as a science, which is not my case, of course. But many times, I'll be honest, it seems like people are looking for actual reasons not to work. You know, in my years practicing magic, I don't think there's ever a perfect time. There's always a planet which is just out there to mess your stuff up and mess the perfect election. So is there really a perfect time for magic? Absolutely not. I really don't think there is. And, you know, instead of looking for the best election, we should make do with what we already have. And of course, now being a professional practitioner, I can't allow myself to make my clients wait. When people come to me, they're looking for results yesterday. So I can be like, hey, well, you're going to wait for two months until this happens in the sky. You know, it just doesn't make any sense for me or for them. And I've spoken to some people who have been waiting for talismans they've commissioned like months or even years in some cases, which I think is absolutely absurd. I mean, 
we have to get stuff done. This is what we do magic for. We have to do it as quickly as possible and we have to find a way to get the result. Maybe it will be incrementally more powerful if you get everything right, but is it worth it to delay it and delay it and delay it infinitely? Like in some cases, you know, when Jupiter, uh, you know, you are to make a talisman when Jupiter is in Pisces, right? How often does that happen? Every 12 years? This is why, as I've said before, I went from no planetary timing, day and hour, full election, and I came back to what I think is the balance between the two, which is planetary timing. So as the maximum goes, as above, so below. And that makes perfect sense. You know, there's no debate about that. It goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. And those guys know a thing or two about magic. On the other hand, you have Al-Buni uh, in his Manba' Usul al-Hikmah, who is really referring to planetary timing. Even in Shams al-Ma'arif, he refers to planetary timing. He says that this is the door of this science. Right, that anyone who is looking to practice the science, that's where they should start with, which is planetary timing. And in many cases, people believe that the hours are for the planets, right? But that's not true. The hours are by intentions. For example, the first hour of Jupiter on Thursday is for, let's say, attracting wealth and prosperity and abundance, so on and so forth. But the second hour within the same day, that's for something completely different. And he just gives like this generic description, which basically tells you this is good for all kinds of good work. So many people think that all Jupiter hours are good for Jupiter related things, but they can be different. With all this in mind, I will give you the absolute best times to work in. I will also give you my formula that I use to time my rituals. This is what I actually use until this day for myself and for my clients. But before I do that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more practical content. So when I'm doing a ritual, especially this is very important when it comes to talismans, I like to look at the moon. This is very important because the moon is the sphere under which we live in and the spirits live in. So it's just, for me, it's one of the most important, if not the most important factor. Many people like to look at the ascendant as well, but in the way that I work, I don't think it's really relevant. But that depends also on what kind of work that you're performing. And then you move on to the day. So of course we know the planetary days and I've explained to you that nights are ruled by different planets than the ones which rule the day. I'll actually link the video so you can watch that. And when you move into the days, you have four good days which are Monday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday. Two evil days which are Tuesday and Saturday. And one half-half which is Wednesday. And then once you select the day, right, you have to make sure that you're working with the appropriate spirit who is ruling that day. And from what the jinns and the spirits have revealed to me, the absolute best times to work are sundown and sunrise. Why? Because that's rush hour. You know, if you have taken the bus in your life, you know that there are rush hours and that the bus passes more regularly during those rush hours, right? So it's the same thing for the spirits. There is a rush hour. There is a shift change from day until night. In the case of sundown, and from night until day, in the case of sunrise. So if I ask you, when is your highest chance of catching the bus in the quickest time possible is during rush hour. So when is the best time to summon a spirit is during spirit rush hour. Now this is not something that I've learned in any book and that's what this channel is for, not the stuff within the books, but from the actual practice and experience. This is something that they have revealed to me and it is my pleasure to reveal to you in this case. So, good days and bad days. Always make sure to look at the moon. Is it waxing? Is it waning? What kind of moon mansion it is? Right? because there are evil and good moon mansions and eventually I'm thinking of making a video about the moon mansions and the hour, all right? And if you stick to sundown and sunrise, because I understand not everyone has access to the whole schedule and what kind of hours are good for what, if you stick to these parameters, 
you will succeed. Now, if you're looking to make things simple and take the guessing game out of your practice, you're welcome to check out my membership site. You'll find the link in the description down below. You stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.